virtual photo walks. Hello and welcome to a, a wonderful virtual photo walk. Uh, we're here in Bracebridge, Ontario, Canada. And behind me, which I'm sure you can see a little bit of, is a waterfall. And waterfalls are one of my favorite photographic subjects. They're always changing. They're never staying still. Uh, and the, the compositions are just about endless. Usually, we have some wonderful landscapes surrounding these waterfalls. So we'll be seeing a little bit of that as well and trying to work that into our compositions. And just traveling around, this waterfall has around 20 or 30 different spots to take pictures of. It'll be pretty fun to see what we can make and uh, some of the techniques to get the best out of those shots. So I'll pass the mic back to John here. Bear with us because this is pretty rugged terrain here, so uh, we're just going to be stumbling along as best we can. John, when you see this kind of a setup, you have uh, you have two choices. Right now, it's about 1 p.m. here, so we have overhead sun, which makes it a little bit difficult to make a photo. There's just too much light coming in. So on my camera, if you can see in the front of it, it looks rather black and dark. Uh, that's because I have a neutral density filter on the front of the lens, and that'll cut out light. And that's important because now I have the ability to darken things down and slow down the shutter speed. For the slower shutter speed, I can make that water look very silky and smooth. And I can see some of the lines come through in the rocks behind. And I think it might make an interesting picture. So I'm going to set up for that. Now, a lot of you will know John from uh, his snowflake photography. Live view is very helpful because it prevents me from needing to get too far down into the ground. So I can actually see that my uh, composition is a little crooked here. And I can adjust for that from a bit of a distance so that I can I can be a bit more comfortable when I'm twisted and contorted on the ground like this. And up, and you can see we are at the base of a waterfall here. Well. Just a, a word of advice to people doing this kind of an image. Um, I have my uh, exposure set to probably around one second or so. That creates that nice smooth effect that I'm after. Now I'm using a neutral density filter to get that. If you don't have one, you set your ISO to the lowest setting possible and your aperture to as small as it can be, and that'll get you the longest shutter speed that you can get. Uh, usually you'd be doing that at dawn or dusk, sometime where there's less ambient light. You'd have better success with it. And on those long exposures, uh, set the camera, if you've got it, most cameras do, to a two-second shutter delay. So when you press the button, you can take your hand off of the camera. It's nice and still by the time the shutter actually gets tripped. And there's no motion blur added from you into the equation. I think I got it. I think I got this shot. So there's another one that I see sort of right behind us if we do a 180 and walk that way. Let's try that one. Very uh, helpful with all these techniques here. And you can contact them through Google Plus. I'm sure I'll answer any questions you have. When I first saw his snowflakes, and uh, I saw it, I just said, I got to meet this guy. I, don't, I can't believe what he's doing with these snowflakes. It just blew my mind. I'll grab the mic for a second here, John, and just describe, you know, what I'm looking for in a lot of these compositions is playing around with lines and shapes and colors. Uh, not a lot of color in the waterfall, but if you can get some green in the background to add a bit of balance to that, I think that that adds another element of beauty to the photographs. These waterfalls are all about flowing water. So the lines are almost invisible to us when we're looking at it with our own eyes, but they come alive when the camera slows that down and those lines become uh, stark and, and, and quite prominent in the images. So a lot of this has to do with pre-visualization. You see something that might look interesting, it's going to look entirely different on the camera. Uh, and so it, it's kind of a fun little bit of exploration. It's not just taking a picture of what you see. 
you're taking a picture and then seeing what the camera can create with it. So let's see what I can do here. Is there anything special to the uh, equipment in such an environment about the tripod and other stuff? Anything special about the equipment? Yes, uh, can I use a normal tripod? Here? Well, the equipment that I'm using here, uh, not, no, normal tripod, this is uh, one of the higher end Manfrotto tripods. Uh, I like it because the center column can flip sideways like I was using it at the beginning and that adds a lot of extra you know, flexibility uh, to get really down low. It's nothing fancy, it's nothing special. Uh, any digital SLR can do it, any tripod can do it. I'm dealing with longer shutter speeds, so tripod's necessary. Um, but beyond that, just your creativity and a waterfall at your disposal. Thinking of even getting lower down and getting a different angle in on this one, and then we'll move on. It would be cool if I had a waterproof camera. Now, it's, it might be important to note that my camera is weather sealed. So if you're getting too close to the water, you'll get lots of splashing and, and that kind of stuff. In this kind of case, it's not much of a problem unless I dunk it in the water. And Unfortunately, I've seen that happen to other people. Never myself. Cross my fingers. Knock on wood. But uh, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. What do you say we uh, make our way back up to the top waterfalls and we can experiment even a little bit with some infrared in this bright, sunny uh, climate? I think that would work out really well. I'm switching out cameras right now to uh, do some infrared work. Is that a modified camera or the modified camera specific for this purpose? All right, now we're walking up there, so <laughs> we're going up there. <laughs> Let's have some fun. This is. Uh, this is us breaking our freaking neck. There. And uh, John, if you just want to uh, pan around here, I mean, this is a beautiful landscape. And you can see that there are certain areas where there's not much water flowing now. But if the water level was just a little bit higher, all of that opens up and there's new waterfalls uh, forming all the time here. So if the water is higher or lower, you'll have new cascades opening up or you'll have uh, new pathways for you to walk. And so every time I come here, I was sitting here yesterday, the water flow is different today than it was then, and new possibilities are always there. So I've been here maybe 40 times, and it never gets old. Everything is always fresh. There's always new ideas. It is, yeah. If you can't find the shot, it's your fault. Yeah, grab that mic there again. In this case, uh, this is not the ideal time for most photographers to be shooting. This is, um, you know, bright high sunlight, harsh shadows, but if you have an infrared camera that takes pictures in a different spectrum of light, then the trees will glow and the water will be nice and dark and so will the sky. It creates a very surreal looking landscape. And I'm going to take a couple of images today in infrared just to see what that difference is going to be, and you'll see that as well. I might even shoot a little video that we could slice in at some point so that you can see what this landscape looks like in infrared versus visible light. And as a photographer, you have so many uh, I guess creative choices uh, at your disposal. Some of them fewer people tend to explore, and that's where I step in, and I have a lot of fun with those areas that fewer people will tread. So let's see what that does. Well, there's, there's one guy that will uh, stretch the envelope. It's uh, Don Camarcha. He is a, he is a master at uh, figuring things out.
I have no scientific training whatsoever, not formally anyhow, uh, but I find in a lot of the work that I do, it becomes an exploration. Photography is a tool that I use to explore the world around me. And I always ask why, and I always am curious to figure out not just how something is, but, but the underlying reasons for things to be the way they are. Um, and that runs through all of my photographic work. When I'm photographing snowflakes, as you mentioned, John, water droplets, uh, waterfalls, stars in the night sky, and, and including infrared and all the other weird stuff that I like to do, pinhole photography and the like. It's, it's just it's a lot of fun. Oh, we've got to, I'll just pan around here. I'll show that waterfalls. That's gorgeous. Yeah. You know, while he's setting up, I'm just going to wander over here, give you a shot of, uh, you can really hear it. Big pine trees. All this country years ago would have be filled with pine trees that all be two or three feet thick. All this got logged over. This is all second growth here. But the voyageurs, this would have been an Indian highway in the old days for the fur traders, the Indians, the voyageurs. They all followed these routes. Sometimes in these uh, tighter locations, you have to shoot a panorama. Uh, I want to have a wide field of view, but it still doesn't give me the tops of the trees and the water that's so close to me here. So this is about a three or four shot vertical panorama. And I honestly don't know how it's going to turn out, but uh, that's sort of the magic of editing to see what it's going to look like after the fact. So in, in this case, I'm, uh, I'm using an, an ISO of uh, 50 or 100, very low, because I want to have that slow shutter speed effect. So that this water, instead of being very chaotic and rough and, and crazy, uh, I'm able to get it nice and soft. It's sort of an element of beauty. It applies the foreground of the image, but still gives me directions and lines uh, that allow the composition to flow very nicely from the front all the way to the back. I try very hard to think in black and white first, and then, as a second thought, add color. Uh, and so. My compositions, my first ideas are never involving color, but then I think, okay, I've got something and it works, but is color an important element or does color not matter? Lines and contrast. And, and so uh, in that case, when I'm shooting infrared, color usually doesn't matter at all. Invisible light, of course. You know, and so if I've got to play with the blues and the greens or if I can add red into the mix, uh, it's not always possible here. There's no red around unless I decide to wear a red shirt during the day and put myself in the photograph. Pre-visualizing in infrared is very difficult, but with the live view on this, I can at least see what the different brightness factors are going to be, but I can't see the same thing with my own eyes. I have to use my camera as my own eyes, and if I don't do that, then get anything useful. Sometimes shooting from the top of a waterfall can give a different perspective as well, and it often includes more of the landscape. So it depends on what kind of element you're after, whether it's going to be uh, just the lines and the shapes of the water as it flows through, or if the overarching landscape becomes a more important element in that. Now, this landscape has a hydroelectric generating station in the distance, but from this angle, it's mostly hidden by the trees. So this is why I'm here trying to get that landscape as opposed to anywhere else. Well, just give us the full shot uh, with a with the tripod. 
that's that looks great when the water is moving. It's hard for the pixels to catch up to the fast moving water. Yeah, yeah, he's too fast, so it's it's also great to see how small he is compared to the whole complex. Gina is asking, is the water cold and how is the weather there? About 75 degrees, really warm. And fortunately, I haven't fallen in the water yet. So, give me a minute. I think it's, uh, I think it's warm enough to go swimming. I can get right behind your uh, your live view there, Don. Put it down in the side. Here. There. Oh yeah, it's okay. Here's down where it was. There we go. A little bit tangled up. Um, so in a shot like this, you know, you can see the bridge, and we might even walk over that, but the nice straight lines of water coming down below, uh, to me, that makes a beautiful composition, but I don't want the bridge in the shot. So I need to zoom in, and a lot of this kind of work involves picking out one small element of a scene and getting rid of the clutter that you don't need. So in this case, I've tested it out. The lens that I have on my camera right now, it's not long enough. I need a more telephoto lens, so I, that's why I bring the kitchen sink of gear with me, because I never know uh, what's going to be necessary to get the shot. And I need a, a telephoto lens, even though I'm shooting waterfalls here. And that's why you'll have a bad back. <laughs> Because the water in the foreground is so much brighter than the trees in the background, this is going to be shot as an HDR, which means I'm taking multiple exposures, some brighter and some darker, and I can combine them together afterwards to get the bright trees in the background, the bright water in the foreground, and all the detail everywhere that I need it to be. This camera can shoot seven shots at once, so that's what I'm going to do. I live for this kind of stuff. This is totally in my element here. You know, just I, sometimes I'll walk around places like this and I don't even take my camera out of the bag. It's just so beautiful. The sound of the water, if you're here by yourself, just drowns out all of those thoughts that are keeping your mind too busy when you just want to relax. And so sometimes I'll just find a rock like this, kick up my feet, and just enjoy a little bit of quiet time. And uh, of course, photography rolls right, right into that for me, and it becomes quite therapeutic. So it's a lot of fun. John spots some beautiful little flowers here. Just a little bit in the sun. I'm going to try and take a picture. It'll be, uh, I'll just use the telephoto lens. 
which means I've got to get a long distance away. That's all of my settings. Thanks very much for having me out, John. Thank you, Don. Thanks. And you can visit the virtual photo walk site and the Google Plus page. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it, uh, uh, Snowflake's book, and uh, we might be able to make some of those available to some of the kids that are really interested in photography. So give us a call, uh, send us an email, and I'll take care of that for you. Bye-bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.